Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet a simple cowl neck tee. So the first thing you're going to need for this project is the free written pattern, and you will find the link to the free written pattern on my blog in the description box. So just go ahead and scroll down into the description box for the link to the free version of the written pattern or you can purchase a large print ad-free printable PDF version of the pattern. You can see the description box for the links to those as well. And the free written pattern contains all of the numbers and all the information you need to make this project in all the different sizes. So this pattern follows the Craft Yarn Council's standards for women's sizing. And this pattern includes nine sizes from a women's extra small all the way to a women's 5X. And you'll need to take your measurements or the measurements of the wearer to determine which size you're going to make. But once you know which size you're going to make, then you can use that information to um, read through the instructions and see how much yarn you're going to need. So I'm going to be making the women's extra small and I am using Lion Brand Jeans Colors. Now this yarn is super soft. It's got very little fuzz to it, but it still has a very um, soft, plushy kind of feel. So because it doesn't really have much fuzz, this is summer friendly because it will allow the, um, the fabric to breathe because not only is it a low fuzz yarn, but we're also going to be working it at a kind of loose gauge, not super loose, but loose enough to let the air pass through the fabric. So this yarn is number four worsted weight. It's 100% acrylic, and I am using three skeins here. But of course, the number of skeins that you'll need may depend on um, what size you're going to make. And the colorway I'm using is called khaki. And you'll also need a U.S. size I or five and a half millimeter crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey Purple. You're going to need a measuring tape, a yarn needle or a blunt tapestry needle, and some scissors. So we're gonna start by making the back of the top. And both pieces of this are basically just a rectangle. And on the front, we do something a little bit different on that rectangle to make the top of it wider for the cowl neck to create the cowl neck but on the back it's just a plain old rectangle so there is no increasing and decreasing in this project at all so if you're not comfortable with that then don't worry about it because we're not going to be doing that at all so i'm going to start by leaving about a, a yard long of a tail so i have about a one yard tail and i'm going to go ahead and roll it up just to get it out of the way and now what we're going to do is we're going to start crocheting. So I'm going to start by chaining two. And what we're going to do here is, first of all, the rectangles are not worked. If we look at our rectangle like this, the rectangles are not worked from bottom to top or from top to bottom back and forth like this. The rectangles are worked sideways where the rows are going back and forth, up and down. So the piece of crochet will be turned on its side so that the foundation edge is at one side and then the top edge or the um, the top of the last row will be at the other side and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the foundation half double crochet to start my um, foundation edge now the pattern does include instructions as well if you want to use a regular foundation chain but the reason I'm using the foundation half double crochet is because it's a method of working the foundation chain and the first row of half double crochet at the same time. And what this does, it's not real hard to do, but it creates an edge that is just as stretchy as the rest of the fabric and is pretty easy to work into later or sew into later. And the reason I want it to be just as stretchy as the rest of the fabric is because it's going to be on a vertical line. So instead of having our foundation edge going across the bottom of our, of our piece, it's going to be going across um, the side seam. And we don't want that edge to not have as much stretch because if it doesn't, then it can hang funny where that the side seam won't hang as long as the rest of the fabric. 
So that's why I'm using the foundation half double crochet instead of a foundation chain. But you can use a foundation chain instead if you prefer. The pattern does include instructions for that. So if you want to learn more about the foundation half double crochet, I have an entire video on using the foundation stitches instead of a foundation chain. And you can go and click the link in the description box to that video if you want to check that out. But I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the foundation half double crochet here as well. So we're going to start with a chain two. And the stitch that creates the foundation half double crochet is not really that much different than a regular half double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to skip the first chain and insert my hook into the second chain. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop. So at this point we have three loops on the hook just like we normally would. Now I'm going to yarn over and pull through one loop only. That creates the chain part. It creates basically the chain at the bottom of the stitch. Then we're going to yarn over and pull through the three remaining loops. So if we turn this um, right side, um, you know, turn it the right way up, here's the top of the stitch and here's the bottom of the stitch. And you can see at the bottom is a chain that we made that holds the bottom of that stitch in place. So we've now worked our first foundation half double crochet and now we're going to work some more. And what we're going to do is for the size that I'm making, I'm going to need 89 more foundation half double crochet. So for all the following stitches after that very first one, we're going to yarn over and then we're going to turn this piece so that the bottom edge of the stitch is facing us. And if we insert, you can kind of see here that this bottom of the previous stitch has two strands to it, just like a regular stitch that we would insert into from the top. So there's a front strand and a back strand right there. We're inserting into the two strands on the bottom of the previous stitch that look like the top of a regular stitch. We're going to yarn over, pull up a loop. Now we're going to yarn over, pull through one loop to make the chain part, and yarn over, pull through three loops to make the half double crochet part. So that was one. I've already done the very first one and I needed 89 more, so now I need 88 more. And I will have a total of 90 stitches. So again, I've yarned over, I've inserted into the bottom of the previous stitch. There's a front strand and a back strand. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one loop. And then yarn over, pull through three loops. One more time, I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to turn this over so that the bottom edge is facing up and insert into both strands of the bottom of the previous stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one loop. And yarn over, pull through three loops. So I'm going to continue working these foundation half double crochet stitches until I have enough stitches for the size that I'm making. All right, so now I have my first row finished. This is my row of foundation half double crochet. And I have the correct number of stitches needed for the size that I'm making. So now we're going to move on to row two. So for row two, we're going to chain two and turn. And we're going to half double crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch. So the back loop only, if you look at the stitch, at each stitch, there is a uh, strand on the front closest to you and a strand on the back, which is the furthest away from you. So when we work in the back loop only, we're only working into the strand that's furthest away. So if you can see right here, I chain two. Here's the stitch that my chain is coming out of. I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop only of that stitch and work a half double crochet. So now I need to half double crochet in the back loop only of each stitch across. So I'm going to half double crochet all the way across, making sure that each time I insert the hook, I am only inserting into that back strand of the strand that is further away from me than the other one. So I'm just going to half double crochet in the back loop only all the way across. All right, so that was my last stitch of the row. All right, so here is what we have so far. We have row one, which is our foundation half double crochet row. And then we have row two. And this will naturally want to kind of curl and twist up on itself, but don't worry about it because the more that you work, the larger you make your piece, that will disappear. And what we're gonna do is, this is our beginning of our rectangle. 
And what we're going to do to make this longer is we're going to continue repeating row two a whole bunch more times until we have the correct number of rows for our back panel. Now for the size that I'm making, I need to repeat row two 38 more times, and then I will show you what it looks like when I'm done with that. All right, so now I have finished working all of the rows for the back, and now what we're gonna do is tie off we're going to cut the yarn and tie off, leaving a tail that's at least a yard long. So we will go ahead and use that tail when we go to put the top together with the side seams. So now that is our finished back for our top. It goes this direction so that the rows are going up and down across the back. And it might look a little bit narrow right now, but it won't be once you block it, because once you block it, it will kind of smooth out and it won't be flat because it does still have a texture to it, but meaning it will relax a little bit when it's blocked. So now that our back piece is finished, we can move on to the front. So the front is going to begin exactly the same way as the back. And we're going to start with that row of foundation half double crochet again. So I'm going to leave a tail and then I'm going to chain two. And again, if you don't like the idea of the foundation half double crochet instead of a foundation chain, the pattern does give instructions for using a foundation chain instead, but I still recommend the foundation half double crochet if you feel comfortable with that. And again, if you don't feel comfortable with that, I do have a whole video on the foundation stitches and how to work them. So I'm going to do the row of foundation half double crochet just like before. I've chained two. I'm going to work the first foundation half double crochet in the second chain from the hook. And then I'm going to work, for the size that I'm making, 89 more foundation half double crochet. And it, remember, each time we work another one, we're working it into the base of the previous stitch. All right, so I've finished the row one, which is the foundation half double crochet row. And now we're going to work rows two through 10, which are all the same row. We're going to chain two and turn, half double crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch and half double crochet in the back loop only of each stitch all the way across. So this is just like the row that we repeated for most of the back of our top. And now we're going to do that same row basically for rows two through 10 of the front of the top. And you'll notice that the front is divided into four sections of instructions. And that's because we're kind of dividing it up in the sense that some of the sizes use certain rows and then some of the other sizes use um, different rows to make that cowl neck shape. It has to do with um, creating that round shape of our cowl neck. And if you're working with a wider piece for the front, then your round shape is going to be a little different than if you're working with a smaller piece. So we're dividing it up into sections so that it will be easier to follow along through the instructions and know which rows you're supposed to work for the size that you're doing. So section one is this row one and then rows two to 10, which is just straight half double crochet in the back loop only all the way across. So I'm going to go ahead and continue working row two and continue working it until I have a total of 10 rows, just like the pattern specifies. And then I'll show you what it looks like and move on to section two. All right, so I have finished that first section, which is the um, rows one through 10. And this is going to be kind of the shoulder section of the the front of our top. So we're going to turn this this way because this is how it goes. Um, the rows are worked this way vertically across the front. 
And what we're going to start doing now is we're going to start working taller stitches at the top, only at the top, of the, the neckline, so to speak, of our front. So most of this is still going to be in half double crochet, but we're going to work some double crochet sections at one end only of each row, and that will widen the top edge of our front rectangle. So then when we straighten it out, when we put it back together, then there will be kind of like a swag in the front, which will make our cowl neck. So what we're going to do is we're going to progressively bring the section of double crochet down, meaning we're going to start with a shorter section, then we're going to make a little bit longer, a little bit longer. So we're going to work several um, different rows that are going to be repeated X amount of times, and each one will be a little different, gradually bringing the, uh, the shape of that double crochet section down. So as we work through section two, what, depending on which size you're working, um, there will be a point where it tells you to stop and move on to section three. So for the size that I'm making, which is the extra small, I'm going to need to stop working section two and move on to section three before I work through all the rows of section two because some of those rows are only for the larger sizes. So we're gonna start by working row 11 to do this, we're going to chain three and turn. And now we're going to double crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch. And double crochet in the back loop only of the next 15 stitches. All right, so that was the 15th one. And now, for the size that I'm making, I need to half double crochet in the back loop only of the next 74 stitches, which is pretty much all the way to the end. So now we're just going to finish this row with half double crochet. Alright, so there's my last half double crochet of the row. And that was row 11, so now I'm going to turn and work row 12. So at this point, we just worked row 11, we have double crochet at this end, so now we're going to half double crochet all the way across and then double crochet at the end of this row. So I am going to chain 2 and turn, I'm going to half double crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch, and for the size that I'm making I'm going to half double crochet in the back loop only of the next 73 stitches. All right, so that was the last half double crochet. And now I'm going to double crochet in the back loop only of the next 16 stitches. All right, so that was the last stitch of my row. And now what we're going to do, this applies to all sizes, we're going to repeat rows 11 and 12 one more time. So we just did 11 and then 12, so now we're going to do 11 again and 12 again. All right, so now we can see that this end of our piece is starting to get a little bit wider and that's what we want. So now we're going to move on to the next pair of rows. So for row 13, we're going to chain 3 and turn. We're going to double crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch. And we're going to double crochet in the back loop only of the next 21 stitches. All right. So now that I finished the double crochet part of that row, now for the size that I'm making, I'm going to half double crochet in the back loop only of the next 68 stitches. All right, that was the end of row 13. So now I'm gonna turn and work row 14. So we're gonna chain two and turn. And for the size that I'm making, I'm going to half double crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch, and then half double crochet in the back loop only of the next 67. All right, so that was the last stitch of my row. So now we are going to repeat rows 13 and 14 one more time. So if you look right here, here's where the double crochets stop in this part which was rows 11 and 12, right here, where we repeated that, where we worked 11 and 12, and then we repeated it again. 
So now we're moving the place where the double crochets stop down here. This is 13 and 14, and we're going to repeat rows 13 and 14 one more time before we move on. All right, so now I have repeated rows 13 and 14 one more time, and now we're going to work row 15. So for row 15, I'm going to chain three and turn and double crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch. Now I'm gonna double crochet in the back loop only of the next 27 stitches. All right, so that's my last double crochet. And now for the size that I'm making, I'm gonna half double crochet in the back loop only of the next 62. All right, so that's the end of my row 15. Now I'm gonna work row 16, which is to chain two and turn. And for the size that I'm making, I'm going to half double crochet in the back loop only of the same stitch and half double crochet in the back loop only of the next 61 stitches. All right, there is my last stitch of row 16. And here's what it looks like at this point. So now um, when we started working the double crochets, they stopped here. And the next set of rows, they stopped here. Now they're going to stop here. So what's going to happen is that for the first three sizes, for the size that I'm making, which is the extra small, we're going to repeat rows 15 and 16 one more time. For some of the other sizes, we're going to repeat it more than, you know, more times than just once and move on to section three. So I'm going to repeat rows 15 and 16 one more time, and then we're going to move to section three. But if you're making a small or a medium, then you would repeat it this, the correct number of times for your size, then skip to section three. If you're making any of the other sizes, then you will repeat it one more time and move on to the next set of rows because for the larger sizes, this double crochet section is going to get moved further down as you go because the panel needs to be wider. So I'm going to go ahead and work rows 15 and 16 one more time according to the instructions for my size, and then we're going to move to section three. All right, so I have finished repeating those rows. And now for the size that I'm making and for the small and medium as well, you're going to skip to section three. So if you're making another size, then you will continue to work through the instructions until it tells you to skip to section three for the size that you're making. And section three is basically where um, you see how we have brought the double crochets further down in each batch of rows that we've worked. Now we need to bring them back up and make it kind of gradually come back up on the other side. So when you begin section three, you're going to skip down to whatever instructions are for the size that you're making. So for the size that I'm making, I'm going to skip the instructions for most of the other sizes and move down to the part where it refers to the size I'm making, which is the extra small. So for this size, I'm going to repeat rows 13 and 14 two more times, and then I'm going to repeat rows 11 and 12 two more times. So I'm going to work row 13, row 14, row 13, row 14, and then I'm going to work row 11, row 12, row 11, and row 12. And then I will show you what it looks like when I am finished with that part, and then we will move on to section 4. All right, so now that I have finished with section three, now it's time to do section four, which is very similar to section one. So now what I'm gonna do is repeat row two 10 more times for my size. Some of the sizes you will need to repeat it 11 more times, but for this size, I only need to repeat it 10 times. So the last row that I worked was a repeat of row 12. And now I'm just going to work row two 10 times, and that will be basically the last part of the front of my top. All right, so I have finished with the last section of the front of my top, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut leaving a tail and tie off. 
So anyway, now I have both of my panels done and you can kind of see how that this panel is wider at the top. So what we need to do to make this drape correctly is we're going to block it. So you can see how this panel still looks pretty narrow down here because it is worked with this ribbing, you know, with the back loop only half double crochet, so it kind of contracts a little bit. So we're going to smooth it out, block it. I'm going to steam block mine, especially focusing on this top area because you can see we have this rounded section of double crochet, and that is our cowl neck. And when we block this, if we block it all out evenly, then the top edge will be significantly wider than the bottom edge. So then when we bring the shoulder seams to the correct width to sew them to the back, then we'll have this extra drapey fabric in the middle for our cowl neck. So I'm going to go ahead and steam block both of my panels, which will kind of relax the fabric, let it drape better, which is a good thing because when you work in the back loop only, drape is definitely a factor. You can get a lot better drape if you block it well. So I'm going to go ahead and block it very thoroughly, especially focusing on the cowl neck area. I'm going to do the same thing to the back panel and then we will sew them together. All right, so both of my pieces are blocked here. This is my front and this is the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the back panel out first so that I have um, the longer tails at the bottom. Again, your tails may be in a different place, so you may have had to um, trim your tails according to where they were positioned. But we just want to make sure our longer tails at the bottom and our shorter tails are at the top. So now I'm going to take the top panel and lay it on top of this one so that the stretched out looking part, which is the part we blocked the double crochet flat, so that it lays and then it, when it hangs it, it, it drapes in the middle because it has extra width. So we're going to lay the bottom edge at the bottom of the back panel and then take this top edge and lay it up towards the top. So we're going to kind of line up the bottom edge of our top here. And then we're going to be whip stitching up both sides of our side seams here. And then we're going to stop when we get to a certain point. So the pattern will tell you the point where you're supposed to stop. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to whip stitch pairs of stitches together. So if I take both edges here of the sides, then I can see that because we used the foundation half double crochet to start with, our top edge of the last row of one piece is going to match as far as it's going to look the same as the foundation edge. Now I have two foundation edges here, but it doesn't matter because they both look like the top of a regular row. So for each stitch, I'm going to insert my needle through one regular stitch on one side and one regular stitch on the other side. So even though they're not, um, even though they're foundation half double crochet, they still look the same as if it was the top of a row. So that was my first stitch. I'm going to go a second time through that same place to secure the beginning of it. And then for my next stitch, I'm going to pick up one stitch from this side, one stitch from the other side, and pull it through. So the pattern will tell you how many pairs of stitches you're supposed to stitch together. So every stitch with the needle goes through one stitch from each panel and it will tell you exactly how many times you need to do that for the size that you're making. So that was my third stitch and I'm going to stop when I get to the point where the pattern tells me to stop for this particular size. Alright, so that's the top of my side seam and now what I'm going to do is take one more stitch right through where we just were, wrap the yarn around the needle and pull it through to make a knot. Now that will secure the top of our side seam. 
normally you would just go ahead and weave in this tail while it was on your needle. I'm going to weave it in later and move on to the shoulder seam. So here is our side seam down here. Then we have this unstitched section, which is the, the armhole. And then at the top, we have the top edge of our panels. So I'm going to take this shorter tail that's at the top edge and we are going to whip stitch this edge to this edge which is the front top edge to the back top edge. We're going to whip stitch those together for a total of 10 rows. So we're going to whip stitch the ends of the first 10 rows together before we stop. So I'm going to pick up both of these edges. I'm going to take a stitch through both corners first and then take that same stitch again in the same place. So we're just going to keep taking stitches to join the ends of the rows on both sides and you just want to kind of make sure that as you do this you're lining up the rows so that they're not offset from each other. This will make it look neater as you stitch and you also want to try to never pick up just one strand of yarn in your stitch. You want to take like one and a half or two strands because that does make the seam more secure without having like stretched out loops in your edges. So by the time we finish this, then these two pieces will kind of blend together a little bit. So I'm going to keep stitching until I've stitched together the ends of 10 rows. So 10 pairs of rows, not just like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but 1, 2, 3, and, con and continuing until I've um, joined the ends of 10. Alright, so here is my last stitch. This is joining the end of the 10th row. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 rows joined together. And now I'm going to take another stitch right through where I just was, wrap the yarn around the needle, and pull that needle through to make a knot. So that secures the end of my seam, and now I will go ahead and weave in both the tail from the shoulder seam and the tail from the side seam. So here's what it looks like at this point. We have our side seam here. This is neatly joined up to the underarm. Here's our armhole. Here's the top of the shoulder. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing on this side as I did on this side. I'm going to start at the bottom and stitch up the side seam. And then I'm going to start at this top corner and stitch the shoulder seam on the opposite side of the piece. So. As you can see, here's the back, and then here is the front. The front is way wider than the top of the back, so that is what's going to make our cowl because when we join the corners, in spite of how wide the front is at the top, then we get this extra drape of fabric at the neckline. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch the side seam and the shoulder seam on this side and then I will weave in my ends and show you what it looks like. Alright, so here's what my top looks like from the back. Up here we have the shoulders and the neck hole and then here are the armholes on the sides. So here is the bottom hem of our top and now let's look at the front. So you can see here how that here's the top of our neck, um, our neckline. We have our shoulder seams here, our armholes on the side, and then we have kind of this drapey, fluid, extra fabric around the neck. And this is what's going to give us that nice cowl neck drape in the front of our neckline. So now you can also see why we didn't do this in the back as well, because if we had this extra drape in the back, then it would not um, come together and drape like this in the front. It would just be wide in the front and in the back, and it would fall off your shoulders. So we make it wider in the front so that it will drape only in the front, 
and the back panel not having a drape is what keeps the front panel from being too wide and falling off your shoulders. So that back panel helps keep it um, ha helps it keep its shape. So here's our cowl neckline. Here's our armholes, and then the rest of the top. So this was a very simple project to make. It's basically just two rectangles with a couple of seams, and this is very approachable for any advanced beginner crocheter to make. Even if you've never made a garment before, this is a good place to start because there's only two pieces. They're both essentially rectangles. Well, of course, one of them is slightly modified to have the extra width at the top. But just a few simple seams can transform these rectangles into a very nice top that can be worn lots of different ways. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.